I probably should do his Italian name, but should I go get that? Yeah, it's, it's actually on the label. <clears throat> Is it? Yeah. Oh, okay. Well. No, it's not. Is it? Yeah, it, I can't read it. It's too small. But uh. Uh yeah, Pietro Pigleri. Pietro Pigleri. Pigleri. Just whip it out like you've been reading that kind of crap all your life. Pietro Pigleri. I'm a Leone. Yeah, I get the Italian thing. But anyway, hey, we're talking about um, 1919, an American wheat from Chalk Beer. By the way, I'm Paul. Uh, uh, I did it again. I've been doing this way too much. I'm like signing off before, uh, I should say, welcome to Beer America. Let's try this again. All right, let's try it again. I haven't had that much. I'm, I'm, I'm fake sipping at this point. <laughs> <laughs> welcome to another edition of Beer America. TV. I am Paul Leone with John Pinkerton. And, uh, you know, we, we try to find unique beers. We try to find beers that are easy to get. And sometimes we, we do a number of beers that are really hard to get, which is sort of a bummer. But uh, the beauty is, is that, you know, wherever you live, uh, there are going to be beers that you know are brewed locally, and you should try them. Or if you travel uh, around, um, you know what's local. That's you know that's what I always say. That's how this started. What's your local beer? There's always a local beer. Yeah, that's kind of the way I like to think about it. You know, a lot of the people that come to our place are traveling, and we're the locals. So. Right, exactly. And and now that I'm living in uh, Fort Worth, Texas, uh, um, you know Oklahoma is just above us, and I came across uh, this beer called Chalk Beer. 1919 and it's an American wheat from Oklahoma and I'm thinking you know what we do beers and we do beers from uh, Maine and Portland and Georgia and um, Colorado and Colorado and California and California and then California because some of these areas you know are really strong brewing areas Indeed, yeah. I don't picture Oklahoma as a strong uh, brewing is it hard for you to, to say that Oklahoma is a local brew for you I, you know, <laughs> thanks. Yeah, the two things come from Oklahoma: steers and beers. Right so, on. Apparently, there so you go. Uh, so I got I got my 1919, uh, and I actually have uh, I, I snuck a bottle of this uh, when I first bought it to try it, and and something very unique happened. And here it is. Let me just show you this right here. And I don't know who's familiar with this, but it's got actually a very unique story um, uh, behind it. You want to pour? Hold on, while I read this. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Actually, uh, an Italian immigrant who, uh, back in 1919 and in, in the early 1900s, uh, uh, came across uh, living in an Indian territory, and, and he came across this Indian homebrew recipe. Uh, Pete Pritchard was his name, and um, got a big chunk of yeast there. He started doing. Uh, yeah, exactly. You know what I wanted you to. Do? You know what I should have done here. Let's open this one. You know, I didn't mean. I to had a little. Time. Time. Okay. I forgot that we... Yeah, that's what he does. It's like we don't... We're sipping for this. All right. I want to show you this first because this is a, a, an important note. But anyway, he uh, took an, a, a recipe passed to him uh, from Indians, and it was called chalk beer. And this is bottle, condi bottle conditioned, which is what? Uh, the re-fermentation. Re-fermentation, right. In the bottle. Uh, and traditionally, I guess, uh, that's how it's done. And there's yeast in the bottom, right? Usually that settles if it hasn't been shaken up or poured. Uh, all at once in a glass, but I want, I want to show this. I want to show this. Well, actually, you know what? Don't try this at home, folks. This one's I am a trained professional. Already uh, mixed up, um, but usually it was clear. It was like um, you know, Budweiser was clear when I first poured it. Crystal you know, clear, huh? Crystal like clear. Brilliant, and then clear, huh? at the bottom, right at the bottom, and I don't know if you can notice uh, this at all, but there's like a yeast. Yeah, I got kind of a plug, really. You know, uh, yeah, down at the bottom, and you can actually, ooh, boy, I don't know if you can see the bottom at all, but I know I'm going here. I'm going to pour, actually, I'm going to, I shouldn't do this. Don't do that, don't just, do Just a touch, because I got to, you got to show it's this. pouring it out. Okay, look at the bottom. I don't know if you can see the bottom there. Can you see the bottom there? There, can you see You're it? You're pretty enthusiastic about this whole Well, I just, because you, you know what? To you, it's nothing, but some people at home go, oh, gosh, there's junk in my ear. What's going on? I got a bad batch, and that's not really junk. the case at all, right? Junk. Well, I, I'm talking about somebody who might not know, you know, who might not have done their homework in I'm reading the bottle. Junk settles to the bottom. Well, well, right, exactly. Well, explain what the junk is. It's not really junk at all. Well, it really just depends on what kind of beer you're talking about as to whether or not there's going to be that much junk left. Mm -hmm. um, you We're know, talking about yeast. This is, uh, yeah. This is uh, an American style wheat beer, um, which is. Uh, a style that's inspired by oh, really? Bavarian wheat beer mm -hmm. from Germany, mm -hmm. uh, which typically is served uh, quite hazy. And if a beer has been sitting on the shelf, the junk settles to the bottom. You're gonna, yeah, thanks. Um, and in some cases, if it settles enough, it'll actually form quite a nice tight uh, layer. Mm -hmm. And like you were saying, 
in some cases you can actually pour it and it'll be just crystal clear. Mm -hmm. um, and a lot of times what uh, some bartenders in Germany will do is uh, take that last little bit and agitate it really well and then pour the rest in. Some people do all this kind of fancy footwork with, mm -hmm. you know, rolling the bottle around and like turning the bottle upside down and all this kind of stuff. Um, but it's really just a, you know, show and a means to an end to get the yeast back in solution. And in the case of American wheats, usually the yeast is not contributing a whole lot of flavor. But uh, being that there's usually a lot of it there, mm -hmm. there's definitely a texture thing that, that kind of comes into play. I really like it. And not beer. necessarily because there's actually like chunks of it, but because mm -hmm. it's, it, it kind of fills the palate with all this um, junk. Still junk. Yeah, <laughs> so when they, when they actually fill these bottles, I guess just the settling of, of it, it's not filtered, right? That, that's the deal? Correct, yeah. Mm -hmm. they're, they're just uh, they're going straight, straight into, into the, the bottle package and after it just fermentation. settles down at the bottle. Now, would it be, and I don't remember if, uh, the first time I had it, these are actually already been stirred up a little bit. Um, if there was much of a taste difference, if you just didn't pour any of the yeast from the bottle. In this actually. case, I don't think there would be a taste difference. Mm -hmm. um, actually, even even with Bavarian Hefeweizen, like the, Bavarians make a, a version of uh, Weizen called uh, uh, Crystal Weiss. Mm -hmm. Crystal Weiss is basically filtered wheat beer. Um, and it doesn't taste really any different. It has a different mouthfeel right. because the all that stuff is gone. Mm -hmm. um, the junk. But the junk. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> But it, uh, the, 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 the flavor components are, are the same. Mm -hmm. But I think one of the distinctive qualities of American Hefeweizen is sort of the absence of those uh, crazy esters that you would find in Bavarian Hefeweizen, which would be the banana ester um, and some of the phenol uh, that, you might, that might be expressed as uh, clove, four mm -hmm. vinyl glycol is that clove note. Sometimes you get like a little smokiness out of it. Sometimes you can even get uh, kind of a, a other kind of spice characters mm -hmm. um, besides clove, but that's kind of the, the essence. Some even have kind of a medicinal sort of uh, almost, you know what a Band-Aid smells like? I do. I mean, it's yeah. disgusting when you say Band-Aid, but uh, everybody knows what you're talking about. Yeah. Some, some people describe it as dentist's office, nice. sort of camphorous or something. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, that's what? the phenol discussion. Yeah, the phenol thing. Which usually results in people going, oh, why yeah. would you want that in your beer? But American wheat beer does not have those things. It tends to be very clean. Uh, the, uh, the other thing about wheat beer is people, some people like to talk about the flavor of wheat. Mm -hmm. This is, you know, we were talking about rye beer and how I just don't quite entirely agree with the whole discussion about rye having all that much flavor. Well, I kind of feel that way about wheat too. I don't think wheat is distinctive because it tastes wheaty. Uh, I think it's distinctive because it doesn't, it takes, it, it, it lessens the maltiness. So you actually are tasting the absence of malt character as opposed to the abundance of wheat flavor. Gotcha. It's a fairly neutral, bready character. Mm -hmm. This is this is a nice beer. Oh yeah, well, no, I appreciate it. I mean, yeah, this is a, some, this I mean, is a good clean. example. Clean is is, is I, I like that. I mean, it, this is really easy drinking beer to me. Uh, and and you know, we kid about the junk thing, but it's you know, some people who, who I guess wouldn't know would go, oh my god, what just happened in my bottle? It's bad. Now speaking know? of junk, um, oh, yes. here we are at Studio One uh, Twenty One, and I keep coming across these interesting posters. Can you, can you tell us what's going on here? That's, uh, that's the girl that works up front. Right on. Yeah, yeah. You should introduce me. We do it right here at Studios 121. Yeah, yeah, sure. yeah. That's, a, that's quite an outfit, too. Of course, we're here after hours, so she's not here, but... Well, anyways, you all just get back to... All right, well, uh, it's 1919. It's Chalk Beer, uh, Krebs, Oklahoma. How about that uh, is where this comes from. So our very first beer from Oklahoma. Steers and beers. Steers and beers. All right, Paul at BeerAmerica.tv. Pink at BeerAmerica.tv. Cheers.